my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to yet another project that I've been thinking about for many, many years. I mean, I've been thinking about this before I was in college. It was since I was a teenager and it is making soap. I've always been fascinated by the process of making soap, the pour soaps. I did a little bit of that when I was a teenager, but then I really wanted to do the real soap where you added lye to some kind of fat. A saponification reaction happens, love that word, which basically means we're taking a fat and we're making it into a soap or alcohol. Uh, I believe alcohol or glycerol. I'm obviously not a chemist. At any rate, it's a fascinating process. We're going to be using a strong base. In this case, we're going to be using lye. You could find lye a lot before. It was more readily available at hardware stores. 100% lye is what we need. It's used to clear drains, but it is very, very corrosive and dangerous. It's a very strong base. It's the opposite of a very strong acid, but it has the same eating corrosive properties. So we must use lots of safety equipment in terms of gloves and goggles. We want to protect ourselves, long sleeves. If it gets on your skin, it will burn you. That's also why I've got some vinegar on hand. Don't have white vinegar, but red wine vinegar will <laughs> work. And we'll use that to neutralize anything if we have any spills. So I've got my work surface covered with paper here and we're going to be neat and tidy, but let's backtrack a little bit and talk about what we're going to be doing. Yes, we're going to be making soap, but we're going to be making soap using bacon fat. I was fascinated by this because whenever I cook bacon, I love to save the fat and I love to fry eggs in it or fry potatoes. It's delicious. And I was researching soap and I said, has anyone ever made soap using bacon fat? And yes, people have. You can make soaps, beautiful soaps, using animal fats. Tallow is beef fat or lard, which is rendered pork fat. Any kind of fat you could feasibly make soap. Some make better soaps than others, but tallow and lard make beautiful, soft, sudsy soaps, really great for using gentle soaps on your skin. And what I'm curious about is, is it going to smell like bacon? So here we are. I have had this project going for years now, I've been collecting bacon fat. And I said, when I lost my sense of smell and taste during the holidays, I was like, oh, this will be a perfect time to tackle this project I've been sitting on for forever. And thankfully my sense of taste and smell are back. Thank you all for all the well wishes and encouragement for that. But we're still gonna tackle this project because the reason why I waited on this project was I was going to do the cold process of soap making, which you combine all the ingredients, get the mixture to the proper consistency, put it in a mold, and then you must let the soap cure for about six weeks before you can even use it. The saponification reaction is still occurring and the soap is still corrosive. It's not good for your skin. It's not completely, the reaction hasn't completed yet. And so I didn't want to wait six weeks for my soap to happen. So now it's been two years and I still haven't made this soap. But then I discovered, I discovered, of course, there's another process. There's the hot process of making soap. I don't know why I never knew about this or it didn't occur to me, but that's what we're gonna be tackling today. We're gonna to be taking bacon fat and using the hot process means of making soap. So we're gonna be making the soap, doing all the process pretty much today, and then I'm gonna let it rest for 24 hours before we slice it because then we'll have a better slice. But in theory, we can use the soap right away, even right when we're putting it in the mold. It's ready, it's, been, it's soapy. But I want it to be a bar and I want it to be sliceable. So we'll come back tomorrow and slice it and then we'll use it. We'll use our bacon fat soap, the bacon fat that I've been saving for literally years. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is to clean our bacon. Now, depending on the kind of bacon you're going to be using, some bacons render more fat, others render less, some will have more particles in it, some will be clearer. It doesn't matter. What I do after I bake my bacon, which is my favorite technique of cooking bacon, if you haven't seen my cooking baking techniques, I'll put a link down below. I also cooked bacon in water. Interesting experiment. At any rate, take your bacon fat when it's still liquid and just pour it into a nice heat proof container and then I store it in the refrigerator. And if I wanna cook eggs, I just take a scoop of that and cook my eggs to yummy deliciousness. So I've been collecting my bacon fat <laughs> in a jar and 
we still need to clean it. And so the process of cleaning it is really, really simple. I don't necessarily want a bacon smelling soap. So we can process it by combining the bacon fat with water into a saucepan. Now bring it up to a boil. It doesn't really matter how much water we use. I would say maybe equal parts. We're going to boil it for about 10 or 15 minutes and that will remove the impurities out of the fat and your water will get kind of brown in color. And once it comes up to a quick boil, you'll see that everything is this kind of creamy color. And we're going to reduce the heat and simmer it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Don't walk away from this. You don't want this overflowing and making a mess or creating a fire. So after it's simmered for about 15 minutes, we can decant it into a bowl like this, heat proof bowl again, and the fat will rise to the top and you'll get a liquid on the bottom like this, a colored liquid. And then we can repeat this process until our fat is nice and white. So when we do this for the last time, then we can strain any little particles. You can use a coffee filter, a paper towel, and filter out any of the little bacony bits. Then let it cool and your fat should be a nice solid mass at the top. And that is what we have here. Before I even started filming this, I prepared my lie outside. You want a very well ventilated area and you want to make sure you're wearing gloves, you have vinegar handy, and you're wearing eye protection. This is very caustic caustic stuff. You're going to measure out your lye on a scale. It's important to be precise. I'm using 3.88 ounces. Oh, I almost forgot all the recipes and references I used for soap making. I will put in the description box if you want to learn more about them. So I use 3.88 ounces of lye measured on a scale and added that to 11 ounces of distilled water. Always add the lye to the water because we don't want a volatile reaction always lie to water. Remember that. Okay. So once we do that, we're going to gently stir this with a spoon and allow it to cool and react outside. It's very well ventilated area. So that's what I've got going on outside. Now I'm going to prepare my fat. So I need 30 ounces of tallow or lard, or in my case, bacon fat. And right here, I've got my slow cooker on low. First, we need to wear our gloves. I just want to make sure everything is covered. Long sleeves too is important. Okay, there's my bacon fat. Isn't that great? So I also have some reserved in this jar as well, nice and clean. So we need 30 ounces of that. Oh, it's so clean. Look at that. So perfectly clean. This smells just a little bit smoky. I'm going to be adding some peppermint to this because I love the tingles I get from peppermint soap. You know what I mean? Love that. So we'll see how bacony he is. I'm curious. So we need 30 ounces of fat, which is about 850 grams. Look at that. It just comes right off. So cool. All right. That's 15 ounces. That's about half of what I need. Alrighty lovelies. I have my eye protection on and gloves, of course, and my slow cooker on low. Now we are going to add our fat, 30 ounces of bacon fat right into here. I went ahead and warmed it up in the microwave just a little bit. So it'd be a little bit more liquid, but you can heat it all the way up in the slow cooker. If you like, I'm going to clean off my hands and I'm going to use this little infrared thermometer. I happen to have, we'll check the temperature of this. It's at a hundred and five, actually 103. So it's recommended in a few of the soap blogs that I've read when you're first starting out, not to have your fats at too high of a temperature because it will react with the lye and it can start to rise and bubble up and that can be a little bit dangerous. So it's recommended not to have your oils over 150 degrees in temperature. Also your lye solution as well. That's why we did it a little bit earlier. I had it cooling off outside. Couple stubborn pieces here. I'm gonna wait for those to melt before we continue. And there's really just no bacony smell, just a slight smokiness. Not porky though, doesn't smell bad at all. Okay, I'm fascinated by this. I cannot wait to use this soap. The secret trick is just to use a whisk. Use a whisk to whisk any 
unmelted pieces of fat. Now we've got our lye solution here and we're going to gently pour it into the fat. Get all that in there and then immediately pour some vinegar into that. Now we need to mix this. You can mix this by hand. It will take quite a while. Instead, what a lot of soapers recommend is using an immersion blender on low until this reaches trace. Now trace is a point at which the mixture thickens and looks like pudding. And then once we reach that, we're gonna let this rest at low temperature, completely covered with saran wrap for 40 minutes. Okay, so we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So you can place the blender in there, make sure we're on low speed and blend this. This is why we're wearing eye protection. We don't want this on ourselves. So. And so we'll know that it thickens when we lift this up and it kind of leaves like a, a ring. Definitely not there. It's just out of curiosity to see how long this takes. So I'll come back once we're thick. I have been mixing this for 19 minutes now and my temperature is at 129 degrees. And the consistency is like a very thick, thick gravy. And when I lift my immersion blender off the surface, it leaves a ring. Let me show you. See how it's thickened? So I believe we have hit trace, which is this thickened consistency. I'm running my blender for about 20 minutes now. I, it's hard to imagine doing this by hand with a whisk. It would take so, so very, very long. My immersion blender is getting quite warm <laughs> and I'm a little concerned, but I'm gonna keep going, give it a couple more minutes. And then we are, make sure to put all of your tools that still have this stuff on it uh, in a solution of vinegar and soapy water. So I'm just gonna give it a little, one more little buzz here. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in my solution of, cap off the excess, and into my vinegar solution. And then we're gonna take some plastic wrap. So now we're going to cover this very tightly. And I read this on a blog saying that Keeping all of this moisture in is really important for hot process so we don't have a dry soap. Now, we're going to allow this, we want this nice and tight, to sit here for 40 to 60 minutes until the soap begins to gel. And we'll see that happening around the perimeter because that's where it's hotter. We'll make sure that's on low and it starts to look like soap. And once it's thickened up, then we can transfer it to our mold. So we're just gonna let it cook for 40 to 60 minutes. I'm gonna set my timer for 45 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll wrap up the preparation process. Well, pretty much the whole process of making our bacon soap. Alrighty, see you in a little bit. <laughs> so excited about this. I can't believe it's taken me so long to actually make this happen. Um, I'm sure I have really nice goggle marks around my eyes. Um, should turn off the camera. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies, my soap has been cooking here in the slow cooker for 45 minutes and it is gelling. So the sponification reaction has been hastened because of the heat and now it's solidifying around the edges. Now from my understanding, keeping the moisture in is pretty important and that's why we've got the saran wrap here. You could also use a lid, but this seems to be working pretty well. It's so stinking cool, this whole process. Let me show you what it looks like better underneath the saran wrap. So now that this has happened, I'm gonna turn off the heat that was on low. And at this point, we can go ahead and put it into our mold. This is a 42 ounce mold, so I'm gonna be making about three pounds 
of soap today and it's important to know how big your mold is so then you know how big of a batch of soap to make. Now we can go ahead and transfer this right now if we like, but I want to add a little bit of essential oil and I could add the essential oil right now, but a lot of it will kind of vaporize and not go into the soap because it is quite warm. Now today I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to be using peppermint and I'm going to use about six teaspoons for this entire batch. So I've got pH strips here to make sure that this is not too basic. Oops. And let me show you what this looks like up close. This is a pretty cool thing. I'm so excited to be actually making soap after all of these years. Okay, so here is the cooked soap. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look how stinking cool that is. It's like alive. So we're gonna give this a stir. Oh my gosh, so cool. So very cool. So I'm scraping down the sides and I'm gonna test the pH. Oh, look how whipped it is. All right, let's check the temperature. We are at 189. So I'm gonna let this cool just a little bit more, keep the plastic wrap on, and then we'll add our essential oils. Okay, let's check the temperature again. Oh, 185. So there's definitely hot spots. While that's cooling, I'm gonna clean up the studio. Be right back. Alrighty, so our soap has had some time to cool off and now we're going to add our essential oils. Now it takes quite a bit of oil to get this smelling lovely. And I have three pounds of soap, so two teaspoons per pound. So we stirred in our peppermint. It smells lovely and I should mention it does not smell like bacon at all. Before I put the peppermint in, it did not smell like bacon at all. Just, oh, this is smelling great. Now it's smelling very pepperminty though. Look at that, isn't that cool? So making soap is similar to baking in the sense that it's important to be precise and accurate. So make sure you weigh everything and measure everything so that your soap turns out properly. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and I've got myself a 42 ounce mold, silicone mold, and then I have this wooden mold around it to help keep the shape and to support the hot soap. So I just went to the thrift store and picked up tools for making my soap. So all of these tools, these spoons, ladles, will now be my designated soap making tools. It'd be cool if I could pour it, but it's pretty, I think I can pour it, it's not too heavy. Into the mold. This is filming? Yes, okay. Nice. There we have it. All right, my lovelies, there we have it. Now we have to let this cool completely so it can solidify and about 12 to 24 hours before we can actually slice it. So I will come back tomorrow, we'll slice it and then we'll use it. See if we can get some soapy suds because that's the benefit of doing this hot process. We can use the soap right away. All right, my lovelies, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> soap. Alrighty my lovelies, I am back. It has been about 18 hours since I poured my homemade bacon soap into this mold and everything is nice and solid. So now we are ready to slice and we will see if this makes a beautiful lather as it should. I am so excited about this. A project that I've been thinking about making soap for over 20 years, I finally made soap, and not only did I finally make soap, but I made it out of bacon fat. Love it, love it. Alrighty, so let's get it out of the mold. Here's the soap, and firm to the touch. It smells lovely and pepperminty, and let's get it out of the mold. Super, this is super cool. So this hard, rigid wooden box helps keep the molten melty soap in its shape so that it can cure nice and solid and straight. Look, it's like an old cheese box. So just peel the silicone away from the soap. It doesn't stick at all. And I guess turn it inside out like this. Oh yeah, look at it release. Oh. Love that, that was super easy. Here is the block of soap. Look at that, beautiful.
beautiful. So my kit came with a pair of cutters as well. So we've got straight pastry like cutter and then this one's got a little bit of a waffly edge for some more decorative look. All right, so I'm not going to measure this because here we go. Oh, that last part was jarring. I'm sorry, but that cut beautifully. Look at that beautiful bar of soap. Let me slice this some more and then uh, we will test the soap. Okay, keep slicing, keep slicing. Let's see if we can slice this one without making that terrible sound. Yes, much better. Beautiful. I like that it's slightly imperfect. It's a reminder that this is a handmade bar soap. I think on this side, I'm gonna try the waffle pattern. So I'm cutting them about three quarters of an inch thick and just going straight down. Wow, that feels good. <sighs> that slices so nicely. Ooh, 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 look at that one. It has a little bit of a ribbed effect. Wow, that looks good. <sighs> Feeling triumphant. Feeling so triumphant. Yes, we want that again. So we will slice, just cut straight down. This is so cool. Look, bar soap. I made from bacon fat. Wow, so cool. I'm actually gonna save some of this cheesy <laughs> looking block stuff for my kids to cut because I think they'll really enjoy it as well. It's super easy to cut, it smells great, and it's soap. Let's see if we can make some bubbles to see if our soap is soapy. Ding! Warm water. Looky, looky. Oh yes, we are getting lather. We are getting lather. And we have soap bubbles. It smells great. I don't smell any bacon whatsoever. None, none. Just lovely peppermint. And look, we have bubbles. Bubbles. Lather, lather, lather. clean out of bacon fat. <laughs> so, so pleased and happy about that. We rinse off any excess. So there you have it, my lovelies. That's how you can take bacon fat and make it into a beautiful bar of soap. You can use tallow, which is beef fat. You can use pork fat, lard. You can use duck fat. Pretty much any animal fat, you can convert it with some magical powers of lye and some water and make some beautiful homemade soap. Alrighty, my lovelies, don't forget, if you have a project that you're working on and you've neglected it, don't get down on yourself. You may get back to it. And when you get back to it, you'll feel really, really good about yourself because you finally finished that project that you put aside for a minute. And don't get down on yourself, you know? You're just, don't have the time, you're not prepared, and you're not ready. And when you are, you'll get back to it and you'll feel really good. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.